Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Rubin. I'm the Vice President of Partnerships and Special Projects for the American Society of the University of Haifa. Today, we will be discussing how to build a healthier generation through global action and education, focusing particularly on early childhood development. We're very excited to have been able to assemble a panel of such dynamic and devoted academics, alumni, and specialists literally participating today from all across the globe. Professor Emeritus Avi Sazi Schwartz is a professor of psychology and child development, the academic head of the International MA program in child development and past dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences at University of Haifa. Sahilu Bey is founder and general manager at the Enrichment Center for Ethiopia and received his MA in child development from University of Haifa. Nana Essi Gacy is a pediatric staff physician for Effia Nakwanta Regional Hospital in Ghana and received her MA in child development from University of Haifa. Alan Rousseline is the social work director for Benemerito Comete Prosigos y Sordos de Guatemala and received his MA in child development from University of Haifa. Our panel will be moderated by my colleague, Donna Ostrauer, who serves as the West Coast Director for ASUH. Donna, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jennifer, and good morning or good afternoon to everyone today, or good evening in some countries also. Um, I would like to start with Avi. Could you please describe a bit about the MA Program for Child Development for Developing Countries, how it came about, and the function it serves? You're on mute, Avi. Greetings, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, let me thank, first of all, the American Society of the University of Haifa for organizing uh, this event. And I wish to welcome you, dear friends, colleagues, and graduates. Many of them I can I hear with us uh, today from all over the world. Uh, the International MA Program in Applied Child Development was established to prepare next the next generation of, interne of uh, international experts with the main goal to improve the lives of at-risk children in developing countries. Uh, I am always inspired by uh, a colleague in the past, John Bowlby, a leading expert in the field, uh, in our field, who said, I will read, mother love in infancy is as important for mental health as are vitamins and proteins for physical health. This is very important. We will follow it. So uh, toward that end, our program is a kind of what I would say, tikkun olam, uh, repair of the world uh, so that our graduates will become what we say child development uh, ambassadors, child development uh, champions, uh, ensuring that children all over the globe, the world, will be able to benefit from mother love and father love. Three of them, of uh, the graduates, are here with us today as panelists, as panelists with much delight to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Avi. And now we're going to turn it over to some of the former students. So Alan, Nan, Nana, and Sahilu, I'm going to ask each of you to comment. Can you please tell us a little bit about your background and what drew you to the program? Let's start with Alan. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Donna. Thank you, Professor Avi. My background is in social work and child development. I been working in programs related with child development since 2013 in Guatemala. Also, I'm a lecturer at the School of Social Work of my country. At present, in this moment, I'm the Social Work Director of Benemerito Comité Prosiegos y Sordos de Guatemala. We operate healthcare, educational, and rehabilitational program aimed to people with visual or hearing disability. During 2019, we reached through our programs around 250,000 people 
in Guatemala. Um, here, our government has a, a public offer for this kind of services. So we are the biggest service providers for people with disability. So that's my background and why I uh, did the MA program in child development at the University of Haifa is because we are recognized as or as organization, we recognize uh, the importance of early interventions, especially when the children are facing particular challenges like a disability, poverty, or exclusion. We recognize the importance um, and also our authorities uh, encourage me to enroll in this program because we are looking for new skills to, develop, to uh, acquire new knowledge uh, in order to strengthen our programs and also to develop evidence-based interventions. We, we know and we have learned that it's not enough charity and good intentions in order to help families and children. We need evidence-based interventions in order to be effective. And that was the main reason that I enroll in this program. I strongly believe that professionalization is essential in order to be effective. In developing countries as Guatemala, one of our um, challenges is we, we, due to the lack of resources, we don't invest enough in training and in science. So, that's why we look to the child development program offered by the University of Haifa. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Before we uh, turn it over to Nana, I just wanted to mention that if anyone has any questions at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a bubble that says Q&A and just click on that and submit your questions and we'll try to get to as many of them as we can at the end of the webinar. Nana, can we turn it over to you now? Yes, thank you. And hello to everyone. Uh, so by way of background, I'm a pediatric staff physician in my hospital. And I serve as a master trainer in many of the child health protocols in the part of Ghana where I work. My story is a bit uh, interesting. I found myself in the program out of curiosity and a hunger that I nurtured for about 18 years because I wanted to find out how parents living with children with special needs could get help. Okay, and so my medical director invited me to his office one day and gave me a brochure with all the scholarship programs being offered in, in Israel the various universities, which he, he apparently got from the Israeli embassy. So he, he asked me to go for public health, apply for public health at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Fortunately, the deadline was over. And that's I looked to, I found the program in Haifa. And I thought, well, I've been asking myself, what can we do for parents living with children's families? Maybe, just maybe, this program could give me the answer. And so I applied, got admitted, and yes, I did find the answer. Thanks. Thank you, Nana. Sahilu? Sahilu, you're on mute. Shalom, Lokulam. How are you, everybody? This is Sahilu from Ethiopia. Uh, regarding my uh, professional background, uh, I am child development specialist, uh, receiving my MA degree from the University of Haifa, and a psychologist and project management at the same time. Now, <clears throat> uh, uh, I do have a very long history regarding my professional connection with uh, the Israeli institutes. Now, before 20 years ago, uh, 
I was a teacher in one of our teacher, teacher training institutes in the southern part of my country, Ethiopia, uh, at a place called, in, the, in a city called uh, Hawassa. And I have been uh, uh, serving there for nearly 10 years. And after that, uh, I got uh, a short-term scholarship, uh, which was my first experience to go to Israel. Uh, th the course was provided by a mashup program and it was uh, uh, entitled the education of the young child with special needs. So after receiving that very short and limited uh, course, I was really inspired with all the activities I observed there. Then upon coming back home, then I just started to think how to establish uh, a non-government organization to serve uh, those children in difficult circumstances. Then I established a, an organization uh, called Enrichment Center Ethiopia and served for a couple of years and again started to think about how to develop my knowledge in child development. Then I started you know, browsing, searching, and asking friends, and then uh, 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 by chance I got uh, an information from from Mount Carmel International uh, Training Institute in Haifa that uh, was uh, really an, in an interesting step to join the University of Haifa. Then I applied to the University of Haifa and got a scholarship to study at the center of uh, the study for child development. Then, of course, I joined that interesting program and now I am serving my country as a child development specialist. Thank you. Thank you, Sahilo. When we initially conceptualized this program for you today, this was pre-COVID. Can you speak, Nana and Sahilo, can you speak a little bit about your professional experiences and any personal observations that you've witnessed in your countries due to the onset of the pandemic? Let's start with Nana. Thank you. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will say that COVID-19 has actually exposed all the inequalities when it comes to uh, services and care given to children. I, I think it's across the world. But it's been very glaring, the inequalities here. And so aside all the challenges of COVID-19, I'm happy that at least all the difficult decisions and conversations have come to the fore. And so I was a privilege to be at the table to talk about some of these things. So let me quickly talk about two of my experiences. The first is that I actually saw that huge need to help keep families happy and healthy. So I started a series of webinar meetings known as the Happy Healthy Home Series. So I've been having these Zoom meetings once every month with other professionals to educate the public on child development and child protection issues like dealing with anxiety, parenting at this time, which was very relevant during the lockdown as most countries in lockdown. And so it's been very exciting. It's been a, good, a great platform and to have the opportunity to do these online meetings. We get so many people to listen. The audience is really big and they keep on pressuring me and suggesting topics that they want us to talk about. And so that's one cool experience I've had there. The other thing is also that uh, today we actually finished a two-day stakeholder conference on how to reopen the preschools. And I was very happy that one of the conclusions that we came to was the fact that children with special needs have been inadvertently neglected all these years. And so we need to be meeting more regularly to discuss how to address specific needs. And that's the most exciting thing that ever happened to me in 2020, because this is something that we had to take up and be responsible for. It's unfortunate that I have to take a pandemic 
for the voices of these children to be heard, but at least we got it covered now. And for me, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Sahilu? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, it's true that uh, children in my country are affected and affected by uh, the pandemic COVID-19, like any other children around the globe. Elsewhere, uh, schools are closed, early child and daycare programs are closed um, since uh, March 2020. Uh, with uh, regard to my professional uh, observation, I would say that the problem is really serious when it comes to, to, to children. Now, uh, the pandemic has affected, you know, uh, on the, uh, has affected the attachment, you know, the relationship between the children and the parents and the caregivers, uh, you, met, you, you name it. Now, um, there, you know, the, psych, the psychosocial and the socio-emotional aspect of the children is really uh, hampered. You no, know, they are now staying at home. It's really a very devastating impact that, uh, that the, pan the pandemic has brought us. And of course, as professionals, um, I do believe that we need to invest our time and energy to overcome this problem and let our children uh, go to school. You know, all stakeholders, call it the public, the government, the professionals must come to work together and uh, we have to learn a new way of uh, you know a new way of life i mean style of life to cope with this pandemic otherwise really the problem is really uh, very devastating to my observation thank you thank you sahilu i know everybody is dealing with covid right now and and dealing with the problems and i think as avi so nicely put it before as since you are the child development ambassadors you're really helping to make a difference with your children now and there's and in the countries that you serve so thank you avi can i ask you a question now why is the university uniquely positioned to initiate and host such a wonderful program and what differentiates it from other programs? Well, I will be brief and I'll try to uh, highlight uh, three uh, points. The first one is uh, we have a strong interdisciplinary uh, team of child development experts and uh, they represent various related disciplines. I will read it because they don't want to miss, you know, it's quite a long list. It includes developmental psychology, clinical psychology, social work, early childhood education, occupational therapy, art therapy and bibliotherapy, developmental pediatrics and more. So this is one point. The second point which makes it quite unique is actually this is the only program of child, MA child development in Israel with accreditation by the National Council of Higher Education. In Israel, we have this council that they uh, provide accreditation to any BA, MA, and PhD program across the country. And the last one, which is not less important, and I think it makes it very unique, I trust after I explored you know, various programs and there are many, many programs in child development. I don't, I don't want to mislead and to be mistaken. Uh, and of course, in the United States as well. But this is the only MA program that uh, uh, worldwide, I would say, the one across the world which hosts students from developing countries, including Africa, Asia, and South America. The three panelists that we have today are from Africa and uh, South America, and we have many, many uh, attendees I know from Asia and other countries uh, with this uh, webinar uh, today. So this makes it very, very unique, and I'm very happy that we could provide this 
to, to, to allow students from all these uh, countries to get access uh, to uh, knowledge in child development uh, using interdisciplinary uh, context. Thank you. Thank you, Avi. I think what's so exciting about the University of Haifa is not only do they make a difference in their country with this university, but for 40 different countries, I believe, is what you represent through this international MA in child development program. So if those who are watching are interested in learning more about the program, we'd be glad to send that to you at the end. Let me move on to Nana. Can you share an example or two of how you've been able to practically apply what you've learned through this program? Yeah, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about my story that I started earlier on. But before then, I just want to share a quick experience I had. As soon as I got back from the program and I had to look through my daughter's work books at school and I found out she had a science book that had actually written in it that uh, the head is used for carrying load. And the problem is that back here, we, we have uh, mothers selling stuff on their head. And so this author had captured it in the book, a science book. And I was totally outraged. I said, what? I've, 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 I've been away and I've learned so much about the brain capacity of children, only, come, only to come and see what my child is being taught. And she was only six years at the time. And so I quickly put it on social media. It was in the morning. It, it went so viral that by evening, it was the news headline. And for a whole week, it was discussed on the radio and the news till the ministry actually withdrew the book. And that was, wow, well, was good. I felt good about it because I felt that these are some of the um, stuff that creates stereotypes in our environment, which we have to deal with with all the knowledge and empowerment that we've received. So that's one nice experience. And that experience is how I got into the program and actually got my, my, my questions answered. Like I already said, I volunteered in a, a special school and found out that parents were very unhappy, always dropping off their children and picking them up. And my heart went out to them. I said, look, what can we do to help such parents? And I found out there was nothing totally nothing in this in the environment i was provoked to go to medical school because i thought i thought i was going to get answers i was totally disillusioned so it was in my disillusionment that i found myself in haifa and during one of our lectures of david david Oppenheim actually brought up a program and i thought this is what i've been looking for so i went on it and it earned me the best point one of the best project awards and since I've been back, I've been working on it. So actually, um, motivated by Jane and Avi, I applied to the Zero to Three Academy where I learned more soft skills to do advocacy. Because I realized that when I brought the intervention down, I started to recruit, well, I started by holding clinics in the hospital for special children with special needs. I had so many children coming to the clinic. I recruited a few and I wanted to carry out the intervention so that I can share my research with the policymakers. I needed the soft skills. And so getting to zero to three helped me learn how to write compelling articles for newspapers. It helped me to make videos that are also compelling. And with all that, as I put everything into practice, I actually won an award last year when WHO and UNICEF had a, a national newborn stakeholders conference in Ghana. And I presented the work that I had done so far. They won the best poster award. And so I'm in the process of carrying out the intervention, trying to do all the bottlenecks. And the goal is to one day carry it out, share the findings with the research, with the policymakers. And I hope that the parents will really get that help because they, in fact, they are because we started a support group for children and families living with autism and the support group has been awesome. And so, I mean, being in the program 
has really been like a lifetime answer to my question. Thanks. Thank you, Nana. You're truly making an impact in Ghana. And because of this program, I think that we're actually starting to be able to change the world, which is a wonderful thing. Alan, let me ask you a question. Why do you feel that Haifa is the ideal place for this type of program? You're on mute, Alan. My apologies. I would like to mention three main reasons uh, about why I feel Haifa is the ideal place for this program. First <clears throat> is, of course, the academic staff. All the professors and lecturers are, are well-known and respected professionals in their fields. They are authors of many publications in areas related with child development. But more than that, they are committed to the cause of children and their interest uh, to continue this program is a clear example of that. In classroom, we don't only learn from, you know, the theoretical content of the course that is important, but we also learn from their passion about children well-being. That's the main, the first reason. The second reason is the diversity of nationalities, backgrounds, and cultures that you can find in this program and the International School of uh, University of Haifa is amazing. I had classmates from 14 different countries in my cohort. And, and it's an, opportun an important and unique opportunity to learn how other countries are facing the same problems like us. So it helped us to broaden our perspective about the a problem. And third, Haifa is an amazing city. It's my favorite place in Israel. And not only uh, because the landscape or the beaches that are really, really uh, amazing, is diverse, um, in my opinion, probably the most diverse and inclusive city all over Israel. The, the city teach us that we all can live together regardless of our cultural and religious differences. I remember the last uh, Christmas, uh, there, there is a street in German colony and the Baha'i Garden that is an, a really emblematic place in, in Haifa. And you can see demonstrations of Muslim uh, religion, of Islam, I, I mean, uh, Christianity, uh, of course, Judaism, all together. And it's amazing to, to see a Christmas tree with the David, the star of David, and the moon of the Islam uh, religion. So it is really an example that we can live together. So these are my three reasons that why uh, that program is unique. And thank you. Thank you, Alan. Yes, definitely the city of Haifa, and especially the University of Haifa is very diverse and everybody working and living together in peace is a great example for the rest of the country. Avi, how do you see the importance of this program and its continuation to the future of developing countries? Uh, well, uh, I think that the developing world is in uh, an urgent and profound need for having child development ambassadors of the kind we just talked about before, all the panelists and uh, myself. Uh, I believe, uh, and we could see already just from what the three panelists uh, mentioned, the graduates, that uh, many of them are already visible and impacting uh, in their countries, and we already have them you mentioned uh, Dana in 40 countries, including Israel, you know, 40 countries, it's also Israel. We also have a few uh, Israeli students once uh, in a while. Uh, I would like to point out, uh, we believe in that, and I guess many, many people believe, we just have to convince policymakers uh, to take this view, 
that to invest in children is to invest in the future of society. It's a big, important investment in society. And what we try to do is to bring knowledge in child development into the field. And we believe, I talk a lot with economists. I mean, wise economists, and I believe that all this makes sense uh, economically uh, when you invest in children, because we invest in society at the end of the road. So just to mention one exciting example, I mean, you have three exciting examples already on the panel here, so I don't have to mention what they do because uh, we listen to them very excitedly. But just many, out, just one out of many, I think it's very exciting uh, and inspiring. We have one graduate from the Roma community in Slovenia. And uh, he, before he came, he was a preschool teacher, a man, a man preschool teacher. And he came to the program, went back to Slovenia, people in an organization known as International Step-by-Step -Step Association, which is the headquarters is situated in Leiden, the Netherlands, invited him to the Netherlands, and he is now overseeing all Europe in trying to um, improve the well-being of the Roma community children in Europe. We are so excited about it. It's, I think it's really wonderful. And that's exactly when we talk about child development champions. He is a champion. Uh, of course, and the graduates mentioned before, it becomes especially important uh, in the COVID-19 era. Now we have a new role and many, many new and unexpected needs. We learn about so many new, new needs, and I guess it's not only in developing countries, it's in our countries as well. USA, Israel, we have new, new challenges um, because of the COVID-19. Uh, I also would like to mention that I believe that uh, the program has um, uh, serves as an important vehicle in the peacemaking uh, process that is very important. A few days ago, we had a graduation of the sixth uh, cohort, and we have a Palestinian graduate uh, from Bethlehem, and she got her MA with distinction, and we are so proud about it, and she is going to definitely to promote the relationships between Israelis uh, and Palestinians. Um, and of course, again, Sahilu, Alan, and Anna are here to share more with you. Thank you. Thank you, Avi. Before we move on to the next question, I just would like to remind everyone that you can submit questions on the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. Nana, in your experience as a pediatrician, can you speak to the costs and impact of not investing in children's health and well-being? Uh, thank you very much for the question. We know that for every dollar invested in child development, you save $10. And so this is very important when we, when we talk about that investment. And this statistic was a statistic that came up before COVID. So we know that now that COVID is here and considering the devastation that it is making now, we probably, if we don't invest that dollar, we probably will end up spending more in future. And so the gains that we have all made in our countries must be sustained. We have to find ways and means to sustain it. And in fact, we also know that many mental health challenges in adulthood actually start in the early years. So that investment is very important. Let me talk about the practical bit of it. Okay, uh, when I started, so when I came back and I started this developmental clinic, I have been very fulfilled because I've seen so many children who initially scored very high points on autism risk assessment over the period, now scoring lower, 
and I've seen parents very happy, very fulfilled. And in my quiet moment, when I reflect on it, I think about what could have happened to them if they had carried on till six years without any intervention. Because some of them had to see the speech therapist, some of them had to see the dietitian. So we had to engage all of them in how to deal with challenging behavior and see, we had to evolve special education teachers. Then we got them into parent support groups. And so that investment is crucial. And it's very, it will be very costly if all these children oh. grow up with that, with that um, social communication deficit. Okay, so for instance, to enhance the work now, I am I'm seriously considering how I can also run another research to see how we can integrate developmental screening into a pediatric primary care. And that is all because I have learned, I have learned that it will be more costly if we don't make this investment. Thank you. I know we're trying to can get Sahilu back. Well, um, once we yes. get Yes. Can you see me, please? Can you see me? No, we cannot. Sorry. Wow. Um, Sahilu, I'm going to go on to the next question. And once yes. we see you, I'll, I'll bring you back. Oh, oh, oh see all you. right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank okay. You. So, Sahilu, the question for you is what do you is ask? That, is that okay? We can see you. What do you estimate are the exponential and Great. benefits of your having participated in this program? When I talk uh, about the program, it really makes me very, very much happy because um, I, 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 I strongly believe that the, the program has changed my attitude as well as the attitude of my community. Uh, what makes this multidisciplinary program so special is its, its impact, societal impact. Uh, the program gathered uh, together professionals from, from, the world, from all over the world. Uh, I do remember we were about 17 um, professionals uh, from different corners of the, our planet and everybody was really active participant Everybody was helping each other, and we were really uh, very, very lucky to have that cohort. Now, uh, the program. When I come, when I, when I, when I uh, uh, come to the point of uh, you know, explaining about the importance of the program, it gave us really specific tools and practical techniques in child development. Now, after uh, my graduation. I immediately uh, came back home and started uh, uh, implementing projects. Now, uh, my projects were focused on training child caregivers and parents. Now, the, the topics of my projects were, uh, were particularly focused on Socio attachment and socio-emotional development of children on uh, sensitive and responsible chi child care taking styles and approach and uh, more of uh, we, we, we have been training our, our, our caregivers on how to constantly uh, giving care for children and about warm and stable uh, relationship between the children and, and, and the caregivers. So, uh, as uh, you know, we had a chance to distribute questionnaires at the end of uh, each, uh, each uh, training program, we used to, to uh, distribute questionnaires and gather information feedback from the training participants. And almost 90% plus participants were very much impressed with the training program that we offered. That my organization or myself as a child a specialist, as a student of the Center uh, for the Study of Child Development in the University of Haifa, 
is really very much proud of doing these projects. So people are very much happy. Participants are, you know, talking about it every now and then. Um, people are now calling at me and asking me uh, to join for the for another sessions, uh, despite the pandemic, you know, because people are really very much eager to 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 share those ideas, those techniques, and instruments, you know, child development instruments that I received from my best professionals in that university. I really enjoyed, and I was really, I can say that I'm the most privileged person to be, to, to, to have those intelligent professors from Haifa University. I'm always proud to be their student, really, very much happy. I can never, never forget Professor uh, Avisagi Shore, it's Professor David Offenheim and the others. The staff members were so helpful, supportive, and uh, you know, it was you know uh, uh, almost ten or eleven months program, and I, uh, you know, my loved ones are behind me, uh, uh, very in in a distant, in a distant, uh, far away from from me. But I was not, uh, you know, I was not that much uh, affected by by losing my my loved ones at home, because. I, you know, there were people, really very, very nice people in that university, especially, especially in our department, in our center, you see. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say, to, to say, to say thank you for my professors and instructors. Thank you, Sahilu. Thank you. Thank you. Abi, what issues and approaches do you feel will be important in the future? And how do you anticipate this program will change and develop to address these changes? Well, uh, all kinds of issues and approaches and challenges, again, because of a uh, lack of time, I'll just, you know, pick a few of them. I would like to highlight this, first of all, you know, from the very positive point of view that we have thus far 128 wonderful graduates. And as we mentioned from 40 countries, I guess one new challenge is even to expand it. 40 countries sound like a wonderful achievement, but we have to remember that still so, so many countries in Africa, in Asia, in South America, and not only in developing countries, we believe also that's part of the challenge. If we could interest students from developing countries, uh, for, yeah, from the, I'm sorry, from developed countries and developed countries to be also to join the program because we would like to see people in Israel, we would like to see people in Europe, in the United States, being interested in fostering the well-being of children uh, across the world, not only in our countries. So that's one uh, challenge, and so we want to expand it. The second one is complicated and we, you know, we work on it. It's, uh, it's not easy, but, but we don't have to give up. It's to, to guarantee sustainability. The students go home with all these new knowledge and skills and they face issues in their own countries because uh, we know these are low SES countries, poor countries, and uh, it's very difficult to move things uh, on your own. So we really try to look for ways uh, so we could continue from Haifa the partnership as we try to do with the graduates uh, even after our graduation so that they can continue and make an impact. Also, uh, we try to uh, get the interest of as many stakeholders who care about children. It's a process that we started to do, and we hope that the uh, American Society of the University of Haifa may also help us, you know, to broaden, you know, this kind of network of people interested in promoting the well-being of uh, children all over uh, the world. I would like to mention, talking about you know, this uh, kind of network, uh, the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, they're already good friends of uh, uh, the program. 
and, uh, and they see the importance of the program, and they see the program as a very important uh, public relations for the state of Israel. Um, uh, and not always is it easy to have a good, you know, public relations of Israel because of the situation. So they really pick it as, a, as an important um, um, aspect in their activity and also to humanity. So uh, we are trying to deepen this uh, network. We focus so much in the program itself that we not, al not always do we have time to work on all these challenges, but certainly these are approaches that we have to take, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Avi. So um, at this point, because I want to make sure that we get to your questions and answers, I would like to introduce someone. Since Avi was just talking about how we want people in the United States and, and around the world to also learn and hear more about our programs, um, I have the fortunate honor of introducing Jane West from Denver, Colorado. Jane has been a part of this program, I believe, for six or seven years now and has been a supporter. And I would like Jane to share with us a few minutes about why she's supportive of this program what, and what brought her to the University of Haifa. Sure, can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Okay. Hi, Jane. <laughs> It's good to be in such esteemed company. Yes, the Two Lilies Fund, which is a small fund that I run in honor of my two grandmothers, uh, who really made my childhood as enriched as it could be. Uh, I, when I began the foundation seven years ago, I was looking for and hoping for something that would exist in the world to serve the purpose that you've heard today and all the ways that it's created child ambassadors around the world that are deeply connected to bringing the social emotional lives of children and their caregivers to life. That's what I was looking for, a really great training program that ideally was in person and respectful of the need to nurture relationships between parent and teacher, uh, not student and teacher, as much as between children. At more than I could ever imagine in this program. It was a wonderful, serendipitous experience, how I found out about it. And I've been an avid funder ever since of a particular class that is offered every year and to support the projects that the students do when they go home so that sustainability is taking root in each country because probably the biggest battles ahead are within ministries of education and health and social services to really hold a high value to what happens to the youngest citizens in every country. And what, we, what you see before you today in the form of Sahilu, Nana, uh, Alan, and the many graduates that are attending this seminar, I can see their names on the side, is a massive infusion into the workforce in all kinds of disciplines, you know, 129 strong, which really is significant because in many countries there are very, very few people in the psychological services or in special education. And these are all coming online and developing. And you see here before you the leaders in their countries and also as um, support to each other. So I've been a very proud funder and will continue to support the program as long as I possibly can. Thank you, Jane. It's wonderful you to be your partner. So um, we have a question from the audience and um, why don't we ask Alan this question? One of the biggest issues is psychosocial trauma with children and parents due to COVID. Most of the schools are being used as quarantine centers. In this situation, how do you support the children in regular learning? Thank you for the question. So that is not the case in my country. Actually, the schools are not being used, but I understand in other countries, they are using schools as um, quarantine centers or sometimes as hospitals. It's, it's a really complicated uh, question because we are facing something that is new for all of us. I would like to say like first, I understand we are really worried uh, about children to continue studying. 
but sometimes we, we think children are there only to go to the school. And it's not the case. Children are more than only students. And we can help them in the in the in inside the house with inside the home with the family. And this is a really unique uh, natural experiment, a really unique opportunity to strengthen the families and the relationships inside the family and make them stronger than before. And here in Guatemala, we are provi we are providing uh, continuous support uh, through WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, or regular calls to our families, all our teachers uh, from their houses, because we are not uh, work working from the institution, but from their houses, they are calling every week or every two weeks, all the families uh, to see how are they doing, uh, if they have uh, any special need to attend or any special support. We have a, a team of 30 social workers and around 15 psychologists who are there in their houses, but are uh, supporting our families uh, in their homes. So, uh, trying to summarize my answer, I, I would like to say, children are more than only students. And we, they can learn probably more from the houses and from the family environment than from the school. It's, it's only for, for a while. So let's be more worried about what are they learning in, in uh, about this, this crisis. Because they will, if, if we teach them how to be resilient, how to, how to follow the guidelines, how, how to help others during this pandemic, that knowledge maybe will be more important than the knowledge that we can teach them in the schools. Thank you, Alan. So to wrap it up, I have um, a question for Alan, Nana, and Sahilu. And can you speak to what makes you the most hopeful that we are in fact creating a healthier global generation? So um, why don't we start with Nana this time? All right, so I'd like to start by quoting uh, one time president of South Africa, President Nelson Mandela. And he said that education is the most powerful weapon that can be used to change the world. And so to, to start with, the opportunity to be even educated is a great weapon. And I remember so clearly how Avi challenged us with his talk about toxic elements in the way some children are being raised in some parts of the world. I mean, I, that, that, that conversation has really stayed with me because as he exposed what those toxic elements were, I mean, it, it brought us to a new awareness, which we probably would, would never have had, even though we lived with them, or even encountered them, you know? And so it personally, it made me take advocacy work very seriously. And since I've been back, I've been on TV, on educational series, that airs every year on at least two major TV stations. I uh, do radio talks. I have a YouTube channel where I download videos that I make, create awareness on child development. And the feedback is awesome. You know, I'm also an author of a, of a, of a marriage book. And the aim was to support spousal relationships because I found out that even your spouse is your, it's actually your secure base. And so drawing from all that we know about children in their secure base, it, it, it works very well if you bring it into the uh, marriage scenario, you know, and so. Thank I you, mean, Nana. Nana, yes, just because of the time, we have a few minutes left, so I want to make sure that, Sahilu, can you quickly answer that question and then we'll get Alan and then we'll wrap it up. Sorry. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
so regarding uh, our um, uh, futurity, I think uh, to, to make the future a better place for our children, now we need to give, to give attention for four main points. One, the spread of the virus must be studied entirely and modeled by the professionals to me. So the public need to get, uh, tan I mean, tangible and scientific evidences so to cope with the new environment. Now we are facing a very difficult circumstance that we did not uh, face uh, for the last very many centuries, you see. So it has to be studied well. Secondly, we have to we have to make an awareness programs for our public, for our communities, so that having those evidence, scientific evidences, we can approach. You know, we can make a project like a home to home project. We call it like a hippie program, for instance, home instruction program for preschool youngsters. So we can we can make a project like this one once the professionals are coming up and helping us by, uh, by, by, by producing tangible facts about the virus. And thirdly, effective tests must be, take, must, be, must be conducted. If we do this, then we, there, is, there is a high chance that our kids will go back to their schools. Thank you, Sahila. Thank you. Alan? You're welcome. Do Donna, my apologies. Could you repeat the question? I couldn't catch. Sure. Can you speak to what makes you the most hopeful that we are, in fact, creating a, a healthier global generation? Oh, thank you. Sure. So I, I, uh, I would like to say that this uh, crisis uh, move the world upside down for all of us, for all the institutions, families, children, governments. And there is a great opportunity to change and to address the problems differently than before. Uh, so uh, after every crisis that humankind uh, had uh, faced, there is a, that opportunity to still being the same and doing the same things or understand that we are going, uh, that we need to change, especially in, in the topic of child development, we need to change our model to create a better environment for them and a brighter future for them. So I am really motivated. I, I, I hope the best, especially in my country, now, uh, the government is uh, doing better, I, in my opinion, uh, especially about children. They are trying to uh, take more actions uh, that they didn't take before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to turn it back over to Jennifer now. Thank you. Um, Wow, I mean, thank you, everybody. What what an esteemed panel, Avi, Nana, Alan, Sahelu, our special guest, Jane West. Thank you all so much for leading us through such an important discussion and for sharing your time and your expertise. Um, the important work that you're doing and your unique perspective really underscore the role of education and professional leadership in improving the lives of at-risk children and their families. Um, and ensuring their healthy development and well-being. So thank you all so much. If you have questions about today's discussion or anything related to University of Haifa, please contact us at info at asuh.org. If you would like to support the university's international MA program in child development or any other university faculties or programs, please visit www.asuh.org backslash donate. Thank you, everybody who was able to join us today. Please be healthy and well, and we will look forward to seeing you soon.